you have not registered, make sure you register. That was a teaser. Amen. Uh, quick, uh, two quick announcements. We are going to be praying for Bruce Morris. He's leaving next Sunday to go to Pakistan for the Pakistan uh, missions trip. So if you want to be a part of that, please make sure you are in church. We get to lay hands on him and just uh, release him. He leaves on Sunday at 2 p.m. to go to Pakistan. And also, I just got a free ticket uh, for Designer Life. Apparently, someone who was born in August this week can get a free ticket. Who was born in August? Oh, there you go. Well, she's not here. I'm talking about someone who's here. Oh, she's next door? No. No. Is she here? I saw someone with a hand over there. You got yourself a ticket, eh? Can't, Can't be getting ticket when you're not even in church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, lift up your Bible. Lift it up real high. This is my Bible. I believe what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. A doer, not just a hearer. Today, I will learn from God's words. And my life will never be the same because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Still talking about prayer. We discovered uh, last week, Ephesians chapter number 6 verse 8, that there are different kinds of prayers. Amen. And we also discovered that the foundation uh, for prayer is fellowship. Someone say fellowship. Uh, Adam prayed before there was anything to believe God for. He lived in a perfect environment. He had everything he needed. Yet the Bible says he prayed or he met in the cool of the day daily with the Lord to do what? To commune, to have fellowship. Amen? So you can pray even when you don't have needs. And then we also discovered last week that there is something called the prayer of petition. Now, if you're not, you were not here last week, you need to make sure you go to the website and download this teaching because it's the foundation of what we are teaching today. Amen? I said amen. amen. Uh, we discovered that there are about seven different types of prayers that we're going to be going through uh, in the following weeks. And the first one which we dealt with last week was the prayer of petition, also known as the prayer of asking. So we talked about how you can ask from God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 7, verse 7, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened and if you seek you shall find. So there's a valid place for you and me to ask from God. Amen. God doesn't mind you asking but he doesn't want you to make it all about asking. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't turn him into a sugar daddy. Amen. Uh, number two, the, it's called the prayer of intercession. The third one is called the prayer of praise and thanksgiving. The fourth one is called the prayer of meditation. How many of you know that meditation is prayer? The fifth one is called prayer of consecration. The sixth one is called the prayer of agreement. And the last one, the seventh one, is, the, uh, is praying in tongues. So we're going to be dealing with all these different kinds of prayer. And today we are talking about the prayer of intercession. Someone say intercession. <laughs> intercession simply means to stand in the gap. Let us now go to Mark chapter number 11 verse 24. Mark chapter number 11, verse 24. If you have it, you can say, I have it. It says, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received it. When should you believe that you have received it? Pray. What should you do when you pray? Amen. He says, when you pray, believe that you've received it. Now, if you believe that you've received it when you prayed, what would be uh, your appropriate response while you're still in prayer? Thanks. I didn't hear that. Thanks. Amen. You should be able to say thank you before you walk out of the prayer closet. Because it says you must believe that you receive when you pray, at the moment that you pray. Amen. And he says, if you do that, here's the net effect. And you shall have it. So if you follow this process, you will have all your prayers answered. Amen. Let us now go to Daniel chapter number 10. How many of you know that God has answered every prayer that has ever been prayed? 
every prayer, God has answered it. First John chapter number 5 verse 14 says, This is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything, here is the kicker, according to his will, he hears us. You know what that means? That means if you don't ask according to his will, he does not hear you. In fact, you have not prayed. It does not qualify as prayer. Not everything that starts with our Father and ends within the name of Jesus qualifies as prayer. You could have filled the in-between with complaining. Yeah. And how many of you know that complaining is not praying? <laughs> Aren't your neighbor and tell them complaining is complaining? complaining. And prayer is prayer. Man, especially wives, they usually, you know, receive Jesus Christ before their husbands. When they pray for their husbands, man, sometimes I have to tell them, no, just stop praying. <laughs> Say, Father, in Jesus' name, this man is a no good man, is a sorry man, is the sorriest thing I've ever seen. And they are speaking unbelief. He's the dumbest thing. And that's not praying. <laughs> that's complaining. And then they end it with, in Jesus' name. <laughs> And a spiritual goosebump. Achaka, achaka, achaka. <laughs> Just to make it all spiritual. No, you were not praying. <laughs> you were complaining. Amen? Prayer is taking his word and speaking it in faith, releasing it, trusting that he will hear you. He says this is the confidence that we have that if we pray, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, verse 15, he says we know. He didn't say there's a good chance. He says we know. He didn't say we speculate. He didn't say we hope and wish. He says we know Amen. that he has answered all our prayers. Amen. Amen. So God answers prayers. But here's the kicker. When God answers your prayer, God is spiritual. And he answers your prayer in a spiritual format. And man, today I'm going to ask you to bear with me because I'm trying to explain some spiritual truths that may be hard to explain. But I pray that you catch the revelation in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Daniel chapter number 10, verse 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Verse 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So Daniel prayed a prayer. And then his prayer was not manifested in the same day. His prayer was not even manifested in the next day. And Daniel decided he was going to go on a fast. Not to manipulate God. Fasting is not a religious calisthenic we use to manipulate God, to get sympathy from God. God, can you see I'm even hungry for this job? <laughs> I'm even hungry for a full day. I didn't eat. God, can't you feel sorry for me? No, that's what fasting is for. Amen? Fasting is to suppress the flesh so that you can become spiritually sensitive to what is going on in the spiritual realm. Because there's a real, there's a realm more real than this realm that is immediate to our five senses. And it's called the spiritual realm. And if you have no inclination, if you have no discernment of the spiritual realm, man, you probably think it's just a hundred of us in this place. But I'm telling you, man, there are multitudes upon multitudes of angels in this place with us, worshiping with us this morning. But you have to have spiritual sensitivity for you to have an inclination and discern that that's what's going on in the spirit. Yeah. So when God answers you, he gives it to you in spiritual format. Yeah. He answers every prayer, but he gives it in spiritual format. And you act as the transformer to uh, connect that spiritual answer and make it manifest in the physical. You take the power of God and have to physically go to someone and lay your hands on them so that they may be healed. God can lay hands on people. He's not laying hands on people. He's doing it through you. So if you don't go, God is not going. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is why the apostle Paul said, hey, I'll be sure to stay you up as long as I'm in this body. Because when you are in this body, you have the power to take spiritual things and make them manifest in the natural. 
Amen. <laughs> this is why you and I have a better chance than the Apostle Paul to transform people's lives today. Because yeah. I can go to Randbeck. But Paul can't. Uh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Paul is amazing, but as long as he is not in this tent, in this body, he cannot translate spiritual things to make them manifest in this thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. And watch what happens. So Daniel is fasting for about uh, how long? 21 days. Watch what happens in verse 9. While he was fasting. And even before we talk about this, let me tell you, electricity is the perfect way to describe this. When God releases the power, it's like electricity. And you, in this earth realm, you are like a conductor to bring that power into the earth realm. And guess what? When you have faith, the power of God flows freely. It makes you a conductor. But when you have fear, fear insulates the power of God. It doesn't flow freely. Yeah. When, you have, uh, 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 when you're walking in strife and unforgiveness, it insulates the power of God. When you're walking with love, it flows freely. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, sin does not stop God from giving you the answer, but he gives it to you. But if you're living in sin, it insulates the power from coming into manifestation. Yeah. So the problem is never on God's side of the ledger because he always answers you based on grace. Yeah. But it has to flow through you. So you have to conduct the power of God and bring it into manifestation. Aren't your neighbor and tell them, don't be an insulator. To the power of God. By walking in fear. By walking in doubt. And by walking in unforgiveness. And strive. Doubt stops the power of God. The power is available. Listen, the power is in your house, but if you try to use a rubber to connect your TV, (laughs) you're not going to get much results. If you try to use a plastic or wood, you're not going to get much results. The power of God is available, but people who are living in strife and unforgiveness, man, they keep insulating the power of God and their prayers are hindered. Remember 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse 7? Husbands, dwell in peace with your wives. Honor them so that your prayers may not be hindered. It was talking about husbands and wives, but ultimately to everybody. If you don't live peaceably with all men, you become an insulator to the power of God. So you can't be mean and ugly and expect to get results from your prayers prayed. Amen? You are just insulating the power of God. Watch what happens in verse 9. Yet I heard... The voice of his words, when I heard the the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face, and my face towards the ground. Verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. God always looks at us this way. Greatly beloved. Amen. Amen. Understand the words that I speak unto you, and stand upright. For unto you I am now sent. When he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, fear not. Someone say, fear not. not. Man, this is the key. It's a prerequisite. Fear not, Daniel. For from the what? I didn't hear that. Come on, preach with me. Preach like you had breakfast. He said, from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were what? In other words, your prayer was answered on the first day. Amen. 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 So the problem is not on God. So your fasting is not trying to convince God because God did his part when? While you were still in the prayer closet, in fact, the Bible says he answers before we pray. But here is the deal. He answers it in spiritual format. Mm. So the transformer has to work. They call me pastor transformer. No, you are the transformer. Because you transform the power of God and bring it into manifestation. Amen. 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 
I said amen. amen. Watch what he did. He says, thy words were heard, and I am come for what? Man, this is an awesome piece of scripture. He says, the reason I came, and this is an angel speaking. He says, I have come because of your words. Man, words are powerful. We use words in prayer, but our words outside of prayer have to be consistent with what we prayed in prayer because things are consistently getting delivered to your doorstep because of your words. Man, the angel came, knocked at the door and said, Daniel, I have come because of what? Words. Whose words? Daniel's words. Man, I wish everything introduced itself this way. When it, came, when it comes into your life. You know, I'll never amount to anything, you know. I'll never get a promotion at work. And then prom- not getting a promotion comes to your doorstep. It knocks. Go, 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 go. Who is it? I am not getting your promotion. <laughs> And then he says those five words. And I have come for thy, thy words. words. Man, they say, you know, wow. there are no eligible bachelors in Johannesburg, so I'll never get married, I'll die single. And then it comes and it knocks at your door. Coo, 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 coo. Who is it? No eligible. No eligible. No and I have come. Because of whose words? <laughs> Man, I'll never own my own house. You know, this house is... And then renting comes and knocks at your doors and say, who's this? He says, renting. What are you doing here? I have come. Man, aren't your neighbor and tell them you're going to have to change your words. Because things are getting delivered. Because of thine words. Amen. Watch what he says right after that. What verse is that? Verse 12. But the prince, so he says God answered in the first day. You saw that, right? But he says in verse 12, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. One day, one in 20 days. In other words, 21 days. This is Gabriel speaking. He says there was spiritual opposition. So when God releases your answered prayer in, in the spirit, there's going to be spiritual opposition. And you can't give the the enemy ground and foothold by saying the wrong words. Because when you speak the wrong words, some of the times you have to cancel angelic orders. And man, Gabriel and Michael, they have to pick up and go back home. So when you stand in intercession, not only are you giving angelic orders, you are supporting the mission to bring all your answered prayers into manifestation. Everything that God answered you when? In the first day you prayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it making sense? Yes. Man, I'm telling you, God has answered prayers. And I'm telling you, the spiritual realm is loaded with prayers. Just waiting for people to start walking in love, to start walking in forgiveness, to start becoming conductors of the power of God instead of insulators. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, if Daniel had given up on day nine and start speaking unbelief, and God never answers prayers, why did I even pray? In fact, I'm going to stop praying. You would have blown it. Amen? Amen. He had to stand in intercession. That's what intercession is. Intercession simply means to stand in the gap. And the highest level of intercession there is, is praying in tongues. Let's go now to Romans chapter number 8, verse 37. Man, you have to connect to the things of the Spirit. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 14, a carnal man cannot, someone say cannot. Cannot. He didn't say it's a hard thing. He says a carnal man cannot. You know why? Because a carnal man is an insulator. He says a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because the things of the spirit are spiritually discerned. So you have to become spiritual if you're going to be an effective transformer to receive the things of the spirit. How do you become spiritual? You get into his word. Being spiritual does not mean being spooky. You know, just whoopaloo, whoopaloo, whoopaloo. What are you doing? I'm being spiritual. No, you're not. You're being silly, amen? Being spiritual is being word of God minded. Amen, that's good. John 6, 63 says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And when you don't have enough word in you, you don't have enough material to conduct the power of God. 
You don't have enough metal. Yeah. Mm. And when you're feeding on the word of God, you're putting in metal to conduct the power of God wow. and release it in people's lives. Yeah. Wow. Amen. I said amen. amen. Romans chapter number 8 verse 26. It says likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. That word infirmity simply means our limitations. Amen. How many of you know that we have limitations? We don't know everything there is to know about why our prayers are not coming into manifestation. So what do we do? We submit to the spirit because he knows everything. You let him be your helper and help you pray. He says, for we do not know. Likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Did you read it? Yes. But, someone say but. but. But the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Listen, when you are at a place where you don't know what else to do, start Submitting to the spirit and praying in tongues. It's the highest level of intercession there is. Amen. You know, I remember my wife and I, you know, we always write down our prayer requests and we put dates right next to them at the beginning of the year of what we are believing God for. And about, you know, 99% of the things have already come to pass. Amen. <laughs> the only other thing that we're still waiting for is the church building. You know, and at the beginning of the year, I made a huge blunder. You know, I was looking at the money that we had in the church account. Man, I made a huge blunder. I was looking at the money that we had in the church account, and I made a target based on that. Not based on what they have in heaven. And I'm telling you, man, Pastor Trevor, yesterday we had the eldership meeting. He was telling us that we are fast approaching that target. Guess who limited God? The pastor himself. <laughs> Man, the next time I'm going to go all out. Because it looks like God can, God, man, he, he wears grown man pants. He can, he can handle his business. It looks like he, he can deliver. Amen. So I'm going all out amen. instead of limiting him. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. So the limit was not on God's side of the ledger. It's on us. Amen. So what does he do? He gives us the spirit who knows all things and who can Make you pray at a higher level. At the highest level you can ever pray. Did you know that God can speak Chinese? Yeah. And German? Mm -hmm. And Zulu and Gosa? But some of you can't. And there are some words in Gosa that you can't find in English. Yeah. So how are you going to pray for that? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> How are you going to pray for that? So you know what God does? He gives you the spirit. And as you shanda marege, shederebo, he makes you pray for the things that you can't even pray for in English. Amen. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Amen. He makes you pray for things that are beyond your understanding. Because some of you can't even comprehend, you know, that corner office right now. But God, when he gets you to pray in tongues, man, you start claiming it, yeah. claiming it and you don't even know it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You start, man, God gets you to start praying his perfect will over your life as you submit to the Spirit and pray in a language that is beyond what you can understand with your peanut brain. Because your peanut brain can limit you. It can make you uh, make targets based on what you can see in your bank account. But when you're praying in tongues, you can go all out and pray the perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember we had one other uh, request there on that list. That just didn't happen. And the date I had for it was the 1st of February, 2011. And I just couldn't understand why it was taking long. And I remember that day, the 1st of February, I started praying in the spirit. You know, and for three hours straight, I was praying in tongues. For three hours straight until I felt a lifting. Listen, this thing is not about feelings, but I felt something. You know, even if I hadn't felt something, something would have happened. I felt a lifting. And as I felt that lifting, man, I just saw praise and thanksgiving bubbling out of me. And I got stirred up. And I remember exactly as I was finishing my prayer time, three hours, my wife called me and she said, hey, I just received a call. That thing has been approved and it's out waiting for you to collect. 
But I was still not satisfied because I think it was one day late. But when I went to collect, I realized the stamp was on the actual date that we had put on our prayer of petition. Yeah. But there was something stopping it. You know why? Because as much as God works through people, Satan also works through people. So God says give and it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together and running over. Shall? Shall? Shall who? Give unto your bosom, right? But Satan sometimes works through those men to stop them from coming into your tracks. So if you don't intercede for them so that their will, their free will can line up with what they need to accomplish, you will miss your Kairos moment. Amen. So intercession, not only is it for you, it is also for people that are supposed to align to bring you into your destiny. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. So this intercession, man, it's key. It's key. It's going to help you a lot. And tongues are the highest level of intercession because you can deal with issues that are beyond your vocabulary and your mental barriers. Let us go now to Mark chapter number 11, verse 12. How much time do I have left? Five? Mark chapter number 11, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. Watch what it says in Mark 11, verse 12. And on the morrow, when he had come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus. Next verse. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he might find anything thereon. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time for figs was not yet. Did you see it? So Jesus went to look for mangoes on a tree in June. But it's June. Mangoes only come when? In December. So what's up, Jesus? (laughs) Next verse. Watch what happens. And Jesus spoke. Give it to me in the New King James Bible. Verse 14. Same, same verse, New King James. In response, someone say in response. In response. <laughs> if you read in the original King James Bible, it says, and Jesus answering it said. <laughs> Which means the tree said something to him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Here's the reason why Jesus expected to see fruit on the tree, even if it was not a season for fruit. The reason is, when Jesus shows up, the season has begun. So remember the cripple was sitting at the pool. You're saying, man, seasonally. You know, there's a man who comes here on the 14th of December and stirs up the water, the angel. And whoever jumps in first in that season gets healed. And then Jesus was like, well, I'm here. The season is now. So it doesn't matter whether you haven't had fruit and you're waiting for December or 27. If you have Jesus in your life, the season is Nam Tlanje. It's right now. Amen. 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 That's the reason Jesus was frustrated with the tree. Because it didn't submit to his authority to bring fruit there and then. It even responded to him negatively. And then he responded. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. And then Jesus walked away. And here's what's interesting. When Jesus said these words, nothing happened to the tree on the outside. But we don't see Jesus saying, okay, now we're going to have to... Say something else. You tree, you are not listening. (laughs) You are a disobedient tree. Let me, no. Jesus released the words of faith and stood his ground. Man, when you pray the prayer of petition and you receive in the spirit, you're going to have to stand in faith. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Man, in fact, when you don't feel like standing, that's when you should stand. The Bible says in Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9, uh, 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 do not grow weary in doing well or in standing, for you will reap in due season if you what? If you faint not. 
Man, when you feel like you can't stand one more minute, stand for two. Amen. When you feel like you can't stand for six more months, stand for seven. Amen. When you feel like you give everything. Because in due season, you will reap if you don't faint. You have to stand on that word. Jesus knew something had taken place. Even though it was not apparent to his physical senses. He was walking by faith and not by sight. He said, that's it. It's done. And he walked away. Man, when you have faith, you speak a word and walk away. Knowing that God has already done it. And standing in faith is a part of intercession. Watch what happened in verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up. So it took 24 hours for the manifestation. Did you see it? But Jesus was was not moved. Because the manifestation was not instant. See, sometimes when we lay hands on the sick and they don't get instantly healed, we get discouraged. But sometimes the healing has already taken effect and it's going to manifest within the 24 hours, sometimes two months, sometimes three months, sometimes six months, but it is coming. You have to stand in your faith and stand your ground. Hallelujah. And the tree was dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you have cursed is withered away. Man, he was, man, look, Jesus, the tree you cursed is dried up. He was amazed, right? And he's expecting Jesus to say, man, you know, I'm Jesus, man. (laughs) What did you expect? Jesus. And I'm the man. But you know what Jesus said? He said, you have faith in God. And then he went on to say in verse 24, because whosoever, so much up, go to verse 24 and see what happens. Go to verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, no, verse 23, verse 23. Go to verse 23. For assuredly, assuredly, I say unto you, whoever, so much out of my whoever. So they're saying, Jesus, man, you are the man. Jesus is saying, whoever. <laughs> they're saying, Jesus, man, you are the man. Jesus. He's saying, anybody. This is for anybody. And then he went on to say, I say, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall believe. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he shall have whatsoever he says. Jesus said, man, you are amazed that I spoke at a tree. Let me tell you, you can speak to a mountain. How many trees are in a mountain? Many. He's saying, man, you are amazed at one tree. You can speak to a mountain full of trees. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. And call it to be lifted up and be thrown into the sea. I have already given you that authority. And he closed this verse by saying, He shall or he will have whatever he says. Come on, read that with me. He will have whatever he says. Is this not connected to Daniel chapter number 10? I have come because of thy words. And here Jesus is repeating the same thing. He's saying, man, they are getting whatever they're saying. (coughs) Uh, And ask them, what have you been saying? Come on. What have you been saying? Because that's what's coming. (laughs) You know what that means? That means whatever you pray and what you say during the waiting period have to be consistent. Uh, Amen. So you can't be praying for cake. Father, we pray that you may provide for us cake today at 2 p.m. And then you walk out of the prayer closet talking about, you know, when we get that bread, Sasko, that Sasko bread, we're going to have to buy a peanut butter because, you know. But no, you were praying for cake. And your words and in prayer and your words in real life are not consistent. And you are most likely going to get what you say all the time. So if you're talking bread, you will get bread. And it's not because God is not consistent. It is simply because he is delivering based on this principle. You shall have. Yep. 
So what you say between the waiting period is a part of your intercession. Amen? amen. I said amen. amen. Let's go now to Mark chapter number 5, verse 23. We're about to close. Mark chapter number 5, verse 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and then remember that your, you have thy brother has ought against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. And first, someone say first. He says, first be reconciled to thy brother, then come and offer thy gift. You know why? Because unforgiveness can even stop your financial harvest. So he's saying, before you sow your seed, make sure you've reconciled with your brother. Because this thing called unforgiveness will stop your. Go to James chapter number 3, verse 16. It's going to be good, man. James 3, verse 16. Give it to me in the King James Bible. James 3, verse 16. King James. Watch what it says. It says, for where envy and strive are, there is what? And every what? Give me First Peter chapter number three, verse seven. <coughs> Is this helping you? Yeah. First Peter chapter number three, verse seven. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with your wives with understanding, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. He's saying your wife is a, he's, he's not saying your wife is a weaker vessel. He's saying treat her and honor her like a, a, a valuable, fragile vessel. You know, the way you treat your vase, your most expensive vase at home, treat it like that. Don't be rough. Amen? Aren't your neighbor? Don't be rough. Don't be rough. Don't be, don't be, don't be. <laughs> uh, it says, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. The reason you should do all of this is so that Come on, let's read it together. So that your prayers be not... Did you read it? So if you don't dwell in peace, if you don't do what he just told you to do above, what will happen to your prayers, your answered prayers? God will answer, but they will just be hindered from coming into manifestation. Do you get it? Man, I wish you got this because if you can get this, it will unlock a lot of things in your life. Did you see it? He's saying some prayers, answered prayers are being hindered. There is a blockage. (coughs) You know, just like in your pipes at home, if you're not getting water, you don't go to city of Job. You know, yesterday I was watering the garden and then every now and again, the pipe, the horse pipe would twist and stop the water from flowing. What do you think I did to get the water to flow again? Sometimes that's all you have to do. It's not on God. It's not on the city of Job giving you the supply. God is answering your prayers. But the tangling, if I can say it, the blockage is stopping the water from flowing. And that blockage is called strife and unforgiveness. Did you see it? And it brings hindrances. So what do you do in intercession? You release people to get manifestation. Man, I wish I had a better sermon where I can just come here and say, blessed. Everybody's blessed. You are blessed coming here. And then everybody say, yeah, and we pick up chairs and we have a good party. (laughs) But we're not going to get results. If we have unforgiveness and strife and resentment, we are not going to get results. We have to release people. Hallelujah. Amen. The last thing is you have to stand in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is your key to miraculous manifestations. You remember Jesus? Man, thanksgiving is the opposite of complaining and murmuring. Complaining and murmuring is a blockage. Thanksgiving is a conductor. You remember Jesus? He had two fish and five loaves. Was that enough? 
more than enough. This is two fish. If I've looked unto heaven, Father, I don't even know why you sent me here on earth. You, two fish. you can't feed people here. I don't even know why you sent me. Is that what Jesus did? What did he do? He took the two fish, the five loaves, he looked unto heaven, and what did he say? I didn't hear that. How come he didn't wait until he had March to start giving thanks? Because the key to March is gratitude. So he took the little that he, man, I want to talk to someone who has a little bit of money in your bank account. Complaining is the reason why you're not tapping into the abundance. Jesus took the two fish, the five loaves, looked unto heaven, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. And he meant it. He didn't use it as a technique. He was grateful. He said, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Some of you are going to try and use it as a technique. No, it doesn't. And you're going to have to mean it yeah, from yeah. the bottom of our Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And mean it from your heart. And Amen. the minute he said that, what did uh, uh, Brother Henry read in Psalm 100, verse 4? He says, you enter into his gates with what? Yes. And into his courts with what? Praise. What was not enough outside of the gates became what? More than enough when he entered into the gates with what? Thanks. Because he had tapped into the spiritual realm of abundance. Yeah. But the only way you could tap into it was to give thanks. What was not enough? Two fish and five loaves became what? Man, you are better preachers than me. I was about to say it became enough. No, it became more than enough. You know why? Because they collected 50 more baskets with fragments. And how did he tap into that? Because he released thanksgiving. Man, thanksgiving will stir you up. <clears throat> this is why we have praise and worship at the beginning of the service. It's intentional. We just didn't go to another church and we thought, oh yeah, they sing fast songs first, slow ones, ah, so we must do the same. No, we, we, there is a method to the madness. We know that when you come, if you lift up a praise, you're going to be stirred up. And not only will you be stirred up, you will be, go to a place where you are ready to receive God's word. And thanksgiving will stir you up. As you are in your car, waiting on the manifestation, you need to tap into thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, growing up, we used to make our own lemonade. And what we used to do is we'd take lemons and squeeze them into a glass and then take about uh, six tablespoons of sugar. <laughs> Just put it in there, and then man, just stir that thing up. Just stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. And then every time you stop stirring, oh, that sugar would sink to the bottom. <laughs> and that's what happens in the life of a believer who does not live stirred up by thanksgiving and praise and worship. You always sink to the bottom of depression, sink to the bottom of doubt, sink to the bottom of it. But when you live stirred up, you'll be on top. Amen. Like Grimora, amen? <laughs> Colossians, chapter number 2, verse 7. Man, it's on top. Someone shout, I'm on top. <laughs> yeah. But you have to be stirred up. And praying in tongues keeps you stirred up. It stirs you up. Colossians 2, verse 7, and we close. Says during this is what all you do during the, 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 the intercession period, the standing in the gap when you're waiting for manifestation, be rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. Do you see it? How do you get established in the faith? Established in the faith as you have been taught. Here's how you get established in the faith. Abounding therein. Abounding therein the faith. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah. Come on, talk to me. Yeah. He says, rooted, built up in him, established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein. Abounding there in what? There in faith. How do you stay abounding in faith? How do you know that your, 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 your faith speedometer is on 180? By what? Did you see it? How do you know that your, your faith speedometer is at 200 kilos? Because this is the autobahn. Man, 
understand the spiritual realm is the autobahn. It's, it's when you no know, 60 kilometers per hour, 80 kilometers, there's no limit to what you can do in faith. Yeah. Except the limits that you put on yourself. Yeah. It's the autobahn, man. And how do you abound in faith through or with thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is a great indicator to show you whether you, and I, not as a technique, I have to say this. Because some people, are like, man, you know, Pastor T said every time I pray, I must thank God. So, Father, you know, thank you. No, not as a technique. Oh, man, it has to come from the heart. You have to be determined that, hey, I'm grateful. And the way you do that is by counting your blessings and many other things we're going to talk about in the following weeks. Why don't you stand on your feet? Thank you, Jesus.